Hey, what's up guys, welcome to Trending Reviews. So I've got another gimbal today, it's from Hohem. I've reviewed a lot of Hohem gimbals in the past. I'll leave a link in the description below of where you can check those reviews out as well. Today, this is the Hohem iSteady Multi. It's called Multi because it's multiple users for this gimbal. Now you can uh, set this up with compact digital cameras, you can set it up with your smartphone and with action cameras like the GoPro. So let's go ahead, unbox this, set it up and give you guys a review. Right, so we have the actual gimbal. We have a metallic tripod stand. There is another quarter inch screw there and a mount. So you have a smartphone mount as well that you can put on top of the gimbal. You also have a micro USB charging cable, a user guide with multiple languages. Then you also have a micro USB cable, which is basically for Sony digital cameras. So if you wanted to connect it directly with the gimbal, then this will work with Sony cameras. Although the gimbal works perfectly fine for other camera models like Panasonic and Canon as well. So that's everything that comes in the package here. So this is a nice carry case. It's very convenient to take with you. Let me go ahead, set this up and give you guys a review. Okay, so quick disclaimer, I don't have a compact digital camera or an action camera like a GoPro, so I will be setting this up with my phone. I'm gonna be putting this into the smartphone mount and put that on top of the gimbal. Now, the functionality and all of the buttons on this gimbal is pretty much exactly the same as the Hohem iSteady Mobile Plus. So I did review that and I've covered all of the functionalities. But for those of you guys that maybe have missed that, let me quickly give you an overview of all of the buttons that come on the actual gimbal. Okay guys, so you have the joystick, you have the power on button there. If you just hold it down for a few seconds, it will turn on. You have the mode button there. So as you can see, there's a few dots next to each of the modes. The first one is the pan follow mode, which has a single dot. The second one, which is pan tilt follow, which has two dots. Now these dots basically represent the number of times you have to press the button to switch to that mode. So the third one, as you can see, there's three dots. It's all locked. So if you want to lock all of the actual axes, then you triple press that button and so forth. Then you have the wide and telephoto zoom button there. And then if you wanted to take a picture, you press this button once. If you wanted to take a video, you just hold down that video button there. On the left hand side, you have another screw port there as well in case you wanted to attach something like a microphone or an external light. And then inside this sleeve, you have a traditional USB and a micro USB for charging. And this one to connect the gimbal or reverse charge your phone. On the back, you have a trigger button. If you double press this, as usual, it will take the gimbal back to its center position. And on the right hand side, this is where the battery indicator lights will appear. Now on the gimbal mounting plates, you can see there is the Sony digital camera port there for connecting your compact camera to the actual gimbal. Then you have some tightening screws here for each of the plates if you wanted to tighten it or loosen it and adjust the width and the height of this. So if I open this out, I can basically change and unlock these move them in or move them out depending on what is the best position for your camera then you just lock it and then for the actual mounting plate you can untighten this you have some measurements there on the plate as well as you can see so if you wanted to move this backwards or forwards whichever would balance the gimbal a little bit more you just do that accordingly and then you adjust it by tightening the screw there you have it and likewise for the height you do the same here and then you can adjust the height like so now I'm going to mount my phone with the mount that comes with it so I'm going to screw this onto the top there we go and the last thing I'm going to do is connect my phone to the mount like that and we are pretty much ready to go so just before I turn it on and start using it, a quick overview of the specs. The gimbal itself weighs 450 grams and it does have a max payload of 400 grams. So just check your digital cameras if you're gonna use it for that and see if it's not heavier than 400 grams. Otherwise you may have some mechanical problems with the gimbal. Now the battery life, it is 3,600 milliamp hours, which gives you a massive eight hours of usage, which I think is great. And because it's not USB-C charging, it will charge fully in about three and a half hours. Now let's go ahead and turn this on. As you can see, it's just straightened itself out. Now, as usual with pretty much all the gimbals, by default, it's on the pan follow mode. 
Okay, so you just basically have to connect this with the Hohem Gimbal app. I have the app on my phone. So once you load up the app for the first time, you click on connect to device and it gives you the option of which device you've mounted on this. So you either select the phone, the camera or the action cam like a GoPro and it will display the functionality dependent on the actual device. So I've set it up on my phone, so I'll select that first option. And as you can see, it's connected. So I'm just panning there now. It's pretty smooth. Now it has all of the standard functionality that you're probably used to. You can change the filters. You can go to pro mode and change the brightness, the contrast, the EV values, whatever you want. You can also flip the camera to the selfie version. Then you can also switch to the panorama mode. This also have a sports tracking mode as well for fast movements. And then you also can use this for live streaming if you're gonna stream on Facebook or Instagram, for example. Now you can't do that directly from this app. So you'll have to come out and go into one of your social media apps that you are live streaming from. I get this question quite often when I'm reviewing gimbals. So just to be aware, you can use a gimbal with that but you may lose the functionality of the button, so you have to use the screen on your phone when you do switch to another app. So let me go ahead and take this out, try and test out. Now it does have something called a Super 3D Fantasy Inception mode, which gives you 600 degrees of rotation. Now it doesn't work with my phone because I have a very large smartphone, but here's a short clip of it working with a smaller phone and it will work perfectly with the compact digital cameras or the action cams. So that's everything. Let's go ahead and take a look at some really cool smooth footage. Okay guys, so here is clip one. This one is basically just me walking and this is on the default pan follow mode. So as you can see, it's pretty smooth. I'm quite happy with it. There's no real shakiness. It is quite a windy day as well and that's not really affecting the smartphone when it's on the gimbal, it's not pushing it around. As we come around the corner here, you'll see the smooth turn. The tiniest bit of bounce but it's relatively and just to pan right and then pan left. Quick, smooth and fast transition there. Now moving on to clip two, just got the gimbal panning across the pond and moving forward. Here I'm running, as you can see it's fairly stable and I'm quite happy with that progress. In this next clip I did top down shooting so I turned the gimbal upwards and I had the phone very close to the floor and I was getting close to these ducks and it was fairly smooth. You can't really tell that I'm walking or bouncing or anything like that and if I pan slowly upwards and back downwards and as you can see it works really well, no shakiness and as you can see with the joystick, I'm just panning left. It was fairly smooth and I'm not really seeing any stagger. In this next clip, I'm going to walk down these steps to see if there's any movement in that. As you can see, pretty solid. I'm quite happy with that. You can't really notice that I was going down steps and that I was going down quite fast. But again, I'm panning. I'm trying to do as many movements as I can. And on the other end of the scale, I'm now going to be walking up the stairs. So I pan downwards and I'm going to walk up fairly quickly. I'm going to do a quick run. There we go, fairly smooth and I'm pretty happy and I'm going to pan really fast to the right hand side. And that was very smooth. And running down the steps one more time and you can't even tell that I was running down steps, which I think is brilliant. Next, I just turned it over to selfie mode to show you guys if you are doing a vlog and you're holding the gimbal using the tripod legs then this is how it would look. I don't have a ultra wide angle on my phone, so I'm capturing quite close up to myself, but I'm panning left and right to show you the difference and the transitions. I'm also doing a quick run here so you can see how smooth this actually is. And you can't tell at all that I'm running. It's very stable and I was very impressed with the output on that. Last but not least, the camera is panning sideways while I walk on this platform and it's pretty much stable and in line with me and I'm pretty happy with this as well. So all in all, it's just a perfectly smooth gimbal. Okay, so hopefully that gave you an idea of the capabilities of the iSteady Multi. Now, if you are gonna get this for your compact digital cameras, then just remember it does come with a Sony cable to attach it to the gimbal using the USB port so that you can control the camera using the functionality of the gimbal directly with the buttons without having to pair it using Bluetooth. But if you just want to use it for your phone, as you saw with the footage, I'm very happy, it's so smooth, and I can't complain, I can't find any faults with that. 
So that's about it guys. Thanks for watching. And if there's anything else you want to know about this, as usual, drop a comment down below. I've got tons more gimbal reviews coming out in the near future. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're not going to miss those ones. And make sure you like this video and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.